If you, so you get you get the call to come out there um, to join Black Street after Dave left, um, and you know he featured on one of their biggest hits on their first album uh, before I let you go, and then Levi is yes, gone, and so it is yourself and Eric, sorry Eric Mark yeah. joining in. What was what was the reservation? Did you did you have what did you think about? Wow, you know, you know a group has already done a platinum album, done some big hits. And now we're going to step in and and replace. Did you? What did you think about that? I felt like these are some big shoes to fill, but I can do it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know, like I said, I grew up with Chauncey. I knew Chauncey. We knew each other since we were probably 15 or 16 years old. Mm. You know, and then it, yeah, it that was a blessing for me. You know what's crazy? I had a brother that passed away in 96, right? Wow. So the day the day of his funeral is the day I got the call to to uh, be a part of Black Street. Wow. And it's, it's so crazy. <laughs> the day of his funeral, Bernard, Teddy called Bernard. Bernard what? called me. And he was like, yo, he said, what you doing, man? I said, I'm you know, He said, yo, he's... You sitting down? I was like, what's up, man? He said, yo, I just had a call. I said, what's up, who, who hit you? He said, he said, Teddy, man. He said, Teddy wants you to be in Black Street. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I felt like, I felt like that wasn't, you know, that was my brother, you know, that was my brother in heaven blessing me. Okay, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That- so by this time Bernard was back in Jersey mm-hmm. and yeah. um, so the, the, but then you get a call to come in 96 the album came out um, another level came out was it 96 or 97 96 September 96 so March March of 96 is when I got the call and the album came out in September how many tracks were you able to be on in, in that I show I was on everything yeah, they, I mean, well, they, they had they they were already recording. Like they had already most of the stuff was written and and backgrounds and stuff were recorded. Mm. When I got there, you know, we were pretty much doing leads. So he added me to to the backgrounds, and you know, we just we just laid it out. <clears throat> okay. One of um, yeah, I mean, w- w- so you come to, <laughs> you come. That was was that your first time of Future Records? Rec- mm-hmm. recording first time yeah <laughs> the um what was it i mean what was it because l- l- i know you you sort of met teddy briefly back in the day but what was it like right. coming to virginia beach seeing the guy in the studio and uh, with his p- team of producers and it was everything it, it, that was like a that was a dream well it wasn't really a dream yeah it was a dream come true i i won't find because i always I thought Teddy was so crazy. Like he was incredible. And I I would, this is another thing. (laughs) Even with, I'm going back to the flex now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would would have meetings, like, you know, we would record songs and then Lil would come in to, you know, to listen to what we did. Mm. And and he crushed me one day. Like, you know, we thought what we had was tough. (laughs) We had dope records, right? And Lou comes in to meet and listen to what we what we doing. And he was like, yo, he said, right, let me let y'all hear something. And he was working on Teddy was working on Bobby's album at that time. That's my fit. That's my one of my top three albums, <laughs> the Bobby album. And this man, Lou Silas Jr., goes and plays this Bobby Brown album. And after that, I was like, I don't want to do the flex no more. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> that's, that's it. I was like, that's it. And then that long after, well, yeah, a couple of years later, yeah, a couple I, get years. Call, I get the call from Teddy. So I was like, yes, let's let's go. So for those who are listening, so Lowell, Lowell Sowles Jr. was, he was the Barry Gordy of the 90, 80s and 90s, um, yeah. MCA, you know, he was, Responsible for New Edition and and Guy and and um, Uptown and 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 you know he all of, that. All, all, all of the stuff. <clears throat> so when he was playing the Bobby album, was he trying to say, "Nah, this is what I want you guys to do"? Or what? Yeah, pretty much. He was like, "Yeah, that you know that's cute. What y'all doing is cute. <laughs> this is what I need. I need something like this." 
And uh, you know, Marley wasn't he you know, Marley in hip hop Yeah, was on was hip hop Marley was like on Yeah, yeah. And when they came to what we were trying to do, you know, he Marley he didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was so it's basically left up to us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we weren't we weren't competing with that. What was your favorite track on the Bobby album? Um all right. Yeah, one more night. Ooh, yeah. God, that you. yeah. That is my favorite track on that. It's six and a half minutes. Um it just goes up and it just it's it's a it's a song and then and it breaks it, yeah. yeah <laughs> just way, give me one way, more now. Breaks it down, even yeah. the, the hook, he'll take two of the notes out and have one. Uh, Teddy was... Uh, <laughs> Teddy don't think like that no more. He ain't, he, he's not, he's not, he ain't on that level, to me. Yeah, personally. yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. He yeah. He, he just ain't doing that type of, that innovative stuff anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say that the Bobby album production wise was probably I mean you know the guy album you know, that was that was that was that was a, the first guy album you know that with Timmy and the groove me was a, just a difference so you don't you don't really put them in because that's that's when he created a whole new sound um other people talk about the future because it was you know lots of variants and everything the production on the future was better to me it yeah yeah it was a better sounding album. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Dave Way was, you know, the engineer there. Yeah. Bernard was the heavily involved and stuff. But the Bobby album, to me, the the the, the sounding, the, 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 the instruments, the, you know, they did seven tracks. You got Mary, Bob, you know, you got everyone working yeah. on that. It's, it's, it's still one of my favorite albums and um, it's, a, it's a crazy album still. Yeah, and 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 I, and I think you are right that and but the first Black Sweet album too um, they took a lot of the energy from the Bobby album and you could tell musically yeah, they, 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 around they, the same time right. Yeah, they right. did a lot but I don't know what what happened after from the mid to late 90s it, it, as you said the, 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 the taking the chances and stuff um, sort of change, yeah, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll move to that now. From the Black Street, the um, another level um, can get you out of my mind. Mm. It, you know that was that that's that you know um, that was a good. I mean, I was like, wow, that's this is different from the rest of the stuff, and it was as long as like a story being told, and mm. you could visualize what was you know on the other circuit you're, you're dancing to it, but that was the main track on that album that you could think wow he's telling a story and you're following it um when the video came out for half plenty i was like man who are these women singing because it spoiled the song it, <laughs> it, it spoiled teddy, the song. The, this, this is the this is the problem with teddy right? <laughs> teddy don't want to let he don't want to let nobody else get shine now that record that's a that's my record that's a record yeah. i produced and i wrote right mm. and Truthfully, that record was written probably ten years before we did it. Wow! But but when I got to Virginia, you know, Teddy knew that I was I was writing and stuff, so I played it for him. He was like, "Yo, we got to do that," and he he definitely took my production to a whole other level on that okay. record, okay. no doubt. But when it came to like people wanted, they wanted people wanted us to release that song as a single. Yeah, Teddy wouldn't do it because he didn't produce it. He, it wasn't his record, so he wouldn't do it. And then when it got to a point where we ha they insisted that we use it for this movie, he went and remixed it so it could be his version in the movie. Uh, they have plenty. Of, okay. Yeah, man. That's that's Teddy's. That's a that's Teddy's problem right there. Okay. His problem. He don't want nobody else to shine, yo. Yeah, you know, I I. Yeah, I di I didn't like the yeah yeah you know it's it was a lot of people have read, written down and says well th that was one of one of their favorite Black Street Out songs, and and I and to me it was one of my favorite ones, but yeah I didn't like the remix at all, um, um and I didn't like the the, the the girls singing it it just took it just didn't sound didn't sound great at all, but <laughs> so so that's 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 okay. Um, yeah because you brought it yeah because that was a very different style in, into it but then what was the experience right on the other tracks so like no diggity i mean did 
what was it like when they were coming up with the beats and then and they were saying come on guys well no diggity no diggity was one of the songs that we that we started when i was there okay but um a a, a guy by the name of uh will Styles, Tri- i think this is uh, the real tricky or something okay yeah will did that he he uh he came up with that song and and pinned it pretty much I wasn't in the studio when it was written, but No Diggity was a... That joint was is still crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as uh, but but what was it you know, when you guys were with 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 there? Um, did Mark was he already there before when you? Before yeah, Mark when? was there before I got there. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people ask, did you know Dave Hollister before you got to call the joint Black Street? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, Levi, did you know Levi before? No, and Levi's from Jersey too, but I didn't know him. Okay. But but Bob knew him and Bernard knew him. Like, you know, like I said, I was in the church. Like I was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're making it seem they like... wasn't in the church. Okay. <laughs> I would have thought, because Bob sounds like he was almost like the bishop's son, the way he sings. No, I mean, no, no, Bob was in the church. Bob was in the church, but... Like I don't know Levi from in the church. Okay, you okay, know, okay, you know okay. Like if if Levi had been in the church, I would know him. Okay, know I mean? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, but then, so you you yeah. So Mark comes in. Um, I think, I think he's he's probably, you know, vocally. I I don't know how many people can reach his range, and he just seems very quiet, and stuff. But when you looked at the d- dynamic when you joined because you must have seen the first Black Street album and, and known about and seen Dave and Levi and then you, you and Mark are coming in did you think there's a gap or did you think oh man we're sounding better collectively or what was your thinking I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't really compare it you know what I mean I just I just knew that we had something crazy like the chemistry like the, the brotherhood everything was just <laughs> It, like, it was, it was, it was, it was spiritual. I, I mm. mean, that's 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 basically ah, that's all I can say about it. It was a it was a spiritual experience doing that mm. album. Like we slept in the stu- we slept in the studio. We had cots. Like you know, <laughs> it was just we were just knocking it out, and we enjoyed being around each other. I mean, you're saying you got there March, and the album came out in September. So, and you would have had to go to ma- master it. So you had very s- small window to. But you said that a lot of the production was done and, and it's just about vocal. Yeah, they, well, but prior to me coming to Virginia, prior to me to getting the call to come, they had already, like they had already auditioned a few people. And I think they went to uh, Trinidad to record the album to, you know, to get focused. Okay. And um, so they did, uh, you know, they did most of the backgrounds and the writing and all of that stuff there. So when they got back to Virginia, it was really just, <clears throat> it was really just, you know, fine tuning, cutting leads and mixing. Yeah. Apart from No Diggity, what would you say was one of your other favorite tracks on that, on, on another level? That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> let's Stay In Love. Let's oh yeah. Let's... Um, I Want To Be A Man, Paradise. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Lord is real for sure. Yeah, it, it it really it was only one song that I didn't like on the album. Which one was that? Uh, I'll give it to you. Have you won it? I ain't like that song. Oh, I give it. To, yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's, that's the only song I don't like. <laughs> okay, I, I don't like it, but yeah, yeah. That's that's a crazy album, man. I, I'm I'm truly blessed to, to have been a part of that that yeah uh, that record. Yeah. So I remember um, ninety ninety six when it came out. Um, I was in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, in college, and you guys came out probably this week or this the week or the week after the week after Home Again, new edition. No, the albums came out the same day. Oh, the same day. So okay, so I, that's I knew that I so I knew that they they you know they came they were number one and and you guys right. slowly crept kept up and and um, and then you know passed them. Right. Um, I was 
you guys came to Milwaukee in 97 on tour. You you were with 702, a new edition, I think, and, Keith and Keith Sweat. Although Keith mm-hmm. didn't come to Milwaukee, but it was just yourself, 702 and, and uh, new edition. First time, you know, so I, as I said, I'm, I was in the crowd and, you know, you guys came out. I still remember when you guys um, did, um, you did Billie Jean. <laughs> You I'm like, wow, you know, you oh, need to. <laughs> wow, you gotta mention that. <laughs> it was, I mean, I was, I was going crazy. I'm a big Michael Jackson fan, so here's. Bl- oh, here's, also you yeah. enjoyed it. Is what oh, I, I, there was, yeah, come on. I was really, I'm like, wow, you guys did Billy Jean because you did a Billy Jean No Diggity remix. So, I, right. you know, so I, I yeah, so I was like, wow, this is great, you know. And then, of course, so that's. You know, I've been on many concerts. I've seen Mint Condition, Mary, Boys to Me. I can't even, you know, in the summertime, everyone shows up. But that was still my favorite concert ever. Because, yeah, wow. Because you guys rocked it, you know. And as, as I said, I was, I've, I've been a big Teddy fan since the early from the eighties. But then right. seeing Blacksmith perform, but the new edition come out, and even though the album wasn't as good. But you know they've been performing since they were five years old, kind oh, of thing. So, it's you, still crazy. yeah. So I, you had I, <laughs> every night I stood on the side of the stage to see them do it. Every night. Yeah, I tell people every if you night. hadn't seen them, because that year, you know, they they had Bell Biff DeVoe would come and do their set. Yeah, Johnny do his set, Ralph do his set, and Bobby does his set, and then they all come together. I'm saying. You know, they could have done the whole night on there by themselves, but wow. it, it, yeah, so that, that's how crazy they were. But they, the last time New Edition and Guy were on the road back in the 90s, uh, uh, ladies, they had a beef and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When you guys went to talk, can you do it? Was, was it all love? There was no like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, none of that. No, none of that. I mean, like, Black Street is just a you know, like, we quiet, we you know, what I mean, nobody's <laughs> really. You know, like we just do our gig and hmm. keep it moving, man. That was a, you know, that was a good thing for me. In the in the nineties, here's Blackstreet coming out, and you see what Jodeci were doing. Um, Boys to Men were doing their stuff. You had Jagged Edge. You had, I mean, I mean the nineties and, and bands were were just unbelievable. How did you think you guys did when it came to not being compared? Because I I wouldn't have I never. I don't know many people. No, many people that wouldn't have compared Blackstreet to Boys to Men or Jodeci or Jagged Edge. It almost felt as if you guys had your own lane, and people were like, "Oh, that's Blackstreet," and they didn't like lump you in with the rest of the groups. Did you? What was your thoughts? I mean, yeah, I, I guess that, that's that's a Teddy thing. You know, Teddy wanted to. You know, he didn't want to. He didn't. He didn't want us drinking, and you know, nobody smoked or anything. <laughs> but you know, if you go to a club, you will have a drink. You couldn't do it around Teddy. Teddy he'd, he'd be like, "Yo, you got it. <laughs> you know what I'm no, I've spoken to people who've known him since the '80s, and they said he was. That's the thing. He just didn't do drugs or drinking and stuff. So he was always. But for you guys, you you went in the news for for anything, so there wasn't any bad publicity around Black Street. It was just like I said, we 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 all came up in the church. Like we, you know, we we didn't live we we didn't live crazy like that. Not to say nobody else is living crazy. I'm just I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So yeah, like we do the show. We didn't do too many after parties or any of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I guess that's that's really what kind of separated us. Yeah, along along with the music, like our album was a lot. You know what I mean? Like we had a bunch of different styles of music on our album. Yeah, and, and I can't say that for for any of the other groups. I don't. I mean, not not that I could think of. Not that I could recall right now. Yeah, but then also you you, you didn't have on the another level. You didn't have a lead singer as such. So. Right. You know, and you know, boys to men would have their, um, you know, one A would always do the the end, and you had Sean that was started off, and and so you always had their progression, so you always knew what to expect. With Jodeci, it was mainly KC, and then, um, then JoJo would join right. in and stuff. So, <clears throat> but with with you know, with Black Street, it was you know, depending on the song, you'd all have, um, you'd all right. have your parts and stuff, and and it was very different collectively. 
there. Teddy, he did that purposely, which which was awesome. I mean, you know, we all got, as far as the recording, we all got, you know, equal time. Yeah. I, I would say on, on the records. Now, in visually, the whole other story. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Yeah, Teddy <laughs> wants to be out front. Teddy wants to be out front. And which was cool with me because that's not my, you know, I mean, that's not my thing anyway. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, the um, you guys, you know, you, you know, you win a Grammy for. Um, I remember you guys on the Tonight Show. Um, I lived because I moved to LA, but uh, yeah, I lived in the states, and I remember when Jay Leno says. Congratulated you guys for knocking Macarena off the off the chart because Macarena. Uh, was, yeah, yeah. We have to congratulate guys. You too. <laughs> With that, I mean, yeah. it, were you surprised how the song took off and and just became a number one, Billboard number one? I mean, this is not yes, uh, yeah. cross. I mean, still playing now. But were you surprised as a group, or did you think, yeah, we knew it was gonna? I was surprised. The, the group would they would probably say no, but. For me, it, yeah, that was. I mean, it, the record was dope to me, but yeah. I didn't think it, I didn't think it would. It would cross it. over. Nah, I didn't think so. I'm so glad it did, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what Thank difference? You. What difference did it make? You know, I mean, having the cross that hit being the first single. I mean, did it just mean that take a lot of pressure, or what, what was it like? Yeah, I would say. I, you know, because they they always talk about this sophomore jinx and you okay, know I mean? so that was that was talk around then. But uh, yeah, that record came out and just went crazy. They had to they had to stop selling the single to sell the album. It was so nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, you had, back in those days, still had singles that had like ten remixes and and, and stuff. Oh, Teddy was a remix master. <laughs> he, just, he, he had crazy remixes for that album. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, you had the Billy Jean version remix. I had pretty much I had, was buying all the Maxi singles on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which you know, as I said, I was a big Michael fan, but a massive Teddy fan. So you know, for us yeah. um, touring, though, how was it for you? Because that album meant going on tour around the world. What was that like for you? Well, we didn't we didn't tour much. That that was one of the that was one of the issues why the group broke up for real because shortly after that album came out the success of that album got Teddy a label deal oh and Little Man yeah L-O-R yeah, so, now, so now he has Little Man artists that he's got to turn in albums for and he couldn't tour and produce albums so we didn't get to tour much we, we did the new edition tour we may have done one or two European tours, and that's pretty much it for real. Oh, yeah, we didn't we didn't tour much at all <laughs> because did the promoters not want? Could he could have stayed behind and done production? But could... oh, he wasn't doing that. That's what that's what should have happened, but he wouldn't he wouldn't allow that. Okay, so in those so there were a lot of people wanted. So in those when he was doing the stuff, he he says, "Look, if I'm not going to be there, you guys can't." go out yeah, it wasn't tour. even yeah it wasn't even talk of touring you know what i'm saying it was just if if somebody wanted us to tour it never got to me you know what i'm saying he was working on these these records and he needed to be working he needed to be in the studio yeah so we missed out on a gang of money touring because wow. <laughs> yeah Joe, oh, so after the new edition one, that was it. So you guys stayed back and stuff. So then, what 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 what, what happens to three members of the group when Teddy's busy right, working in the studio? What did what did the three of you guys do? Well, I like I, I was doing my own music stuff. So that's when you know? Jaheim and Donnell Jones and stuff were coming in. Probably, yeah. yeah, probably around that time. But yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that's one of the issues that black street always had even even during the first black street from what i understand yeah yeah it's, you make an album to go on tour because you know you're not gonna make record you're not gonna make money on the albums so you make your money on tour but he didn't allow us to tour <clears throat> uh, so
so the, the and I guess for fans who aren't in the industry, um, if you're selling eight million albums, I would assume that the group's really getting a nice little check in the post for selling that many albums. The groups never recoup. Groups never recoup. The album is they were selling albums for what seventeen dollars. Yeah, yeah, sixteen ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, and the group gets. I believe we were getting like twenty five cents. Wow, for the album. Yeah, like you the album money on tour. Yeah, the group. I ain't talking about me. The group, and and then they that, split it into four. Not only that. You got flights, you got hotels, you got like all of your expenses come out of your twenty five cents. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. It's, and so if you don't tour, you're not making money. And so, and we didn't tour. <laughs> wow. Okay. Goodness. <clears throat> you know, and I and I think that's the hard part as to how, but then we was Blackstreet signed to. Yeah, uh, so Teddy production. production. So, because I think we've seen the TLC stuff, so they were signed to Pebbles. So Pebbles got a big chunk of the stuff um, from LaFace, and and so they were left yeah. with stuff. So the same sort of thing with with sort of Black Street is that okay? You, you're signed to. I'm hit, sure that I'm sure that's happened with most of these R&B groups that yeah. are signed to a production company. Yeah. So the production company, the, the record label pays the production company, and the production company is supposed to pay the artist, but yeah. it don't always happen that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that's that's the, the cycle that you you said it's you know I was robbed, I need to recoup what what I lost ten years ago, kind of thing, and and, and interest. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm.